everybody, it's Tyler here at Score Signature, checking in 2025D Terminator coming in from Texas. Just finished up Qualls and having a great run so far. One of the things that I was really impressed with this team is just getting the goal rush done every single time, a crucial part of their strategy, which we'll be diving more into. But just a very well-built robot. We'll be traveling through a bunch of different aspects for different spacers and guards that they have in this robot. Some cool custom things have been doing uh, with the Lady Brown mech and a lot more stuff to dive into, a little bit more in code as well. So I can't wait to dive more into this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Josh, let's start to dive right into this robot here. Talk to me about how your intake works, and we'll just kind of follow that ring journey through your robot. So uh, a lot of what our intake does is slightly different from other teams, is in previous iterations of our design, our intakes had a bar running right through here. As the ring would go up and into it, it would uh, it would then hit into the, into the metal, causing issues, and sometimes rings would get stuck. So what we developed within our CAD, and as we looked at the game, is realizing if we just had our actual intake ramp, our intake hooks fly in through the ramp, so we this, allowing the smoothest pickup so there's no hiccups, which allows us to easily pick up rings, pick, pick up multiple rings at once, allowing us to easily uh, score and not have to worry about getting stuck, jamming, or causing issues in Auton, which then leads up to our other crucial part of the robot, which is our, our wall stake mech, which will, has three prime positions. And the first prime position is load, which will then intake in, load in, and then it will go to, then it will prime to fire which will then score and then set right back down. We also have a D-score setting because as the game has evolved, we've found it crucial that we be able to control that top ring as we need to control the, third, the three points versus the one. We set it right back down. After we D-score, we set it down, it goes straight back to loading, which allows us to just quickly go back and throw a ring right back in and score the uh, points. So that's something we might see in playoffs, you think, here at score? Yes, for example, if, uh, as, as the Elams, a lot of those wall stakes become very crucial because all the teams have really fast intakes and all those uh, mobile goals quickly get filled up. So we find that very crucial as we've seen throughout all the different signature events and different competitions we've been to. One other thing I want to ask you, I noticed on your uh, Lady Brown here, this is a pretty wide area for grip. Have you experimented or looked at scoring two rings at one time? Uh, we've looked into it and we realized that as it requires a lot more tooting, we find it easier just to store uh, one inside the Lady Brown and store one right there, allowing it just to quickly dunk. So we would dunk one real fast and uh, then it would go down and then we'll just intake back in and dunk it again. Which we found that be faster and more efficient than uh, going through the extra effort of tuning with more than one. I think one of the things that's a little bit different too, we've seen some of the Lady Browns are, they're also utilizing it as a goal tip, but you have a separate goal tip back. Talk to me more about that. So uh, a lot of Lady Browns will have a 36 to a 12, making it smaller, allowing them to fully rotate. However, we do not do that because we've realized as uh, our competition is that that requires a lot more tuning and it's, it's a lot harder to reach. And the, and the bigger, uh, and the bigger, longer Lady Browns are able to uh, easily reach it. So it's able to uh, get it in from many, many more different angles and be less precise during like a heat of a finals event. So what we did instead is we had this uh, this little mech here, which can tip goals by just going in, it'll clamp down, and then we'll drive back and unlock it over. And then what another fancy thing this can do is really easily pick up goals, because if we want to pick up an enemy team's goals and be able to score it in the negative corner, we can just, we have these one-inch standoffs that come down, pull back, and just tip the goal right up. Your team has a triple crown already this year, three event wins, a lot of great success. Luis, I got to ask you, on your robot here, one of the big success things for that is your Doinker and Goal Rush mech and part of that strategy into it. So talk to me more about that. And then also I know we'll be talking about some of your liners too. Yes, uh, so one key part uh, of, of the strategy we found this year is that controlling the third MOGO is really important towards and, and either qualification matches or elimination matches. And so in order to really stand out, um, we decided to, to implement a a pincher mechanism. It's it's sort of a combination of our Mogo mech and our and our Doinker, and it allows us to control the third Mogo straight off the bat. Uh, another key feature that we found is uh, since our um, Mogo mech is not omnidirectional, we found to, we found out that um, having these spacers out uh, on the on the ends of the of our drivetrain really help align our, our Mogo mech uh, toward like. Not the corners, but the sort of like the straightest, straighter part of it. 
And we were talking earlier, you had to do a lot of different tuning and experimenting with that. Like, what did that really entail as you tried to get that just right? So mainly what we experimented was, uh, experimented was like the size of the space, the outside diameter of the spacer, and uh, that's really much, that's really it, basically. For sure. Austin, talk to me about uh, a little bit more of your mat strategy. I mean, you've had a lot of great success overall throughout the year, as we mentioned as well, too. Walk me through what are some of the key elements of each match for you. So um, some of the match strategy that we've implement, uh, implemented is we've already looked at um, controlling the third goal. And uh, we realized that after our first couple comps, a lot of teams, they really uh, care about those positive corners. But um, we found that even if you get into both positive corners, if you don't fill up all the way, you can still quite easily get beat by a team that has possession of all three goals. So we really prioritized, like we said in Auton, we built this whole mech, which sacrifices our ring rush and some of our Auton and getting a super high um, Auton score as because um, we want to be able to control the match and dictate it at our play by having that third MOGO, which we can just drop off and uh, at the end of our Auton, we'll come directly uh, in between like the ladder and the wall stake and we'll sit there um, so we can guard uh, from any team trying to get to our positive, we can guard, which will give us enough time for our teammates to come around the back of us, clear out the corners, put their goal in, and then they can grab the third and they can sit um, diagonal to that so that they're never plowing or anything. And it's uh, physically impossible for any team to get into that goal. So the main part of Auton is that, uh, as th that's what we've really prioritized in Auton. It's just controlling that goal, dropping it off right near the positive corner so our team doesn't have to go all the way across to go control that goal. And then another big part of um, match strategy is that we're always adaptable. Um, we bring this clipboard to every match so that we can uh, very easily communicate with our uh, teammates and stuff, and we can show them where we'll end Auton. We ask them where they end Auton. So that, because um, as the game's evolved, we've immediately uh, realize that uh, early season, it was all about trying to score as many points on Auton as you can. We were looking at filling up a full goal to six, maybe maximizing top rings, getting a wall stake, getting the alliance stake, getting two goals with stakes, so that way we have the most points and we win Auton. But we figured out that it's even more crucial to uh, have good auto ending spots so that you can quickly get into your corner, you can quickly set up your screen. Since we always have third goal control, we really just need to protect our corners and make sure we don't lose both corners. Partners. Um, and with this clipboard, that just allows us to easily visualize where our opponent, or where we'll end and what we need to do to uh, maximize our game strategy. And finally, uh, the last part of our game strategy is just being flexible, honestly. Um, at the end of each Auton, we like to, uh, we'll communicate with our teammates exactly what we do. Most of the time, especially in like higher up matches, uh, like in playoffs and elims and stuff, we'll, uh, as I said, we'll set that kind of screen, allow other teams to come in, clear out the corner, set their stuff down, grab the third goal. But um, we've also, ex uh, especially this comp, we've experimented a lot more with, depending where robots set up and what we're looking at, after we grab that third goal and pull it back, leaving both goals in front of us, we like, uh, depending where our opponents end Auton, if they're far away from that positive corner, if we immediately rush that corner, that will cause a lot of confusion, a lot of distraction, and keep them from wanting to come to our corner because they're worried about us getting to theirs. And um, every once in a while, we're able to get into their corner. And after we get into both positive corners, especially if we have the third MOGO, I mean, it's really just, um, it's very hard to come back from that. Even if you control all both wall stakes, it's still extremely hard, especially in the new meta uh, with the 32nd corners where teams just leave their Lady Brown directly. Um, he flicked the Lady Brown out they leave the Lady Brown right over. I mean, you just can't put a wall stick on if our Lady Brown's exactly over the, uh, if our Lady Brown's exactly over the top of the, uh, the wall stick, you just can't put one on. So it's just very easy to control those wall sticks for us with the new 30 second rule change. Yeah, and overall, you only have one loss throughout this entire event. So obviously the whole strategy has been panning out very well for your team. Uh, let's, let's wrap up with uh, Adrian, talk a little bit more on some of the programming, the code, the sensors, what goes into the guts of this robot to really make you so successful. Uh, yeah, certainly. So similar to 999-04W, uh, we uh, look at our travel costs and our turn costs with our, uh, with our autos. So making sure those are as low as possible really helps with our autos. So, And then also using coordinated odometry, uh, making sure that we plot every single scoring object on the field, whether it's a MOGO or a ring. So making sure, especially with the goal rush, if we ever, uh, especially like last match, where we contact if the team's rushing with us, making sure if our robot's offline, it's, it's able to come back and then get to the exact spot that we want it to be at. So using, uh, making sure everything's on a graph for us with our coordinated notation really helps. And then keeping our travel costs and our turn costs very low also helps us uh, with the AWP in the future, looking forward to uh, grabbing a separate ring. Because right now at the end of our auto, we still have about two to three seconds left. So being able to grab uh, with an intake lift, grab the ring towards the center and scoring that on the line stake would really help with our AWP to, to boost our rankings. So that's really big for us. And just making sure uh, we're always in the right spot, like you said, at the end of autos. So we're able to assess what we want to do next and make sure our potential is at the highest possible. And uh, we have a color sensor with our robot as well. 
to make sure that if we score the, because especially with top ring, it's a big thing to uh, score uh, to score the correct color. Because if you score a top ring of the opposite color, that's three points for them that you just they just don't need. And especially in auto, when your robot doesn't really have a lot of sense of what exactly it's exactly supposed to pick up in front of its way, making sure that it doesn't pick up the wrong ring is really important. So that's a big thing for our color sensor where we just detect the hue. And today we had a problem that we never really expected with our color sensor, where pretty much so the the backlighting of the venue with the blue lights. It detects it really well, so it causes our intakes to stop. So overnight, we made the switch of uh, switching it to distance as well as hue. So if the ring is in uh, the certain distance with the hue, it keeps it from scoring the correct one. I'm glad you'll be able to overcome that because we've actually heard that from quite a few teams yeah, here at SCORE uh, for sure on that. Terminator, thank you so much for taking time to detail more about This is an incredible robot, by the way. And thank congrats you. on all your success you've had so thank far you. this season. Of course, best of luck here at SCORE. Can't wait to see how you do throughout the rest of the way, especially as we get to uh, UIL champs, Texas champs, all that stuff yep. as well. Can't wait to see how you do. Thanks a lot, guys. Yes, thank you. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.